whispered you were back in town. I never thought I'd see. In Boston, Prospect Hill. And both of them, in fact, the entire band campaign last November for the decriminalisation of marijuana. So, Andy, tell, tell me why you and the rest of the band thought this is important to get out there and uh, campaign about. Well, um, we, uh, we don't want anyone like like ourselves to be getting in trouble for something that we don't we don't see him as a as a problem. We don't see you know I mean, marijuana users aren't going out and killing people over over weed. Um, weird. It's it's just something that I don't know. It's, uh, I don't really know what to say about it. To be honest. When you say you don't want others to get in trouble, like you have, you you, you yourself have been arrested twice. But not in Boston or Massachusetts, in the neighboring state of New Hampshire. What happened to you? Uh, I was arrested the first time when I was 17 years old with, uh, with a, a glass pipe and a little crumb of, of weed. And uh, I, I went to a diversion program, did the whole court thing, paid my $2,000 fine. And the second time I was actually arrested as a passenger in a car. I wasn't driving, I wasn't doing anything. I was just in a car and I was searched. And they found a, a small bag of marijuana, which had less than a gram of weed. And I was also arrested for that. And now I'm actually going through the court. And the fees and the fines and the lawyers and the district attorney right now, as we speak. And D-Roll, what's the impact of that kind of thing to people when they get uh, uh, a criminal record? Now, of course, you can't in Massachusetts, but in the past you could. What, what, what would happen to people if that happened to them? It would affect jobs. Uh, it would just affect your life in general. I personally feel like we need to take the next step even further than decriminalization as to legalizing it because I feel like we're in a depression right now and the marijuana industry would get us out of that. Tell me more, how would that, uh, what's the thinking, how would that work? It would offer jobs, it would, it would be a whole new industry, it would further, I feel like it would surpass the automobile industry by far, like, because everyone, you know, it's the, it'll, people, I wouldn't smoke cigarettes anymore if I could go to the store and get a pack of weed, like, you know, a pack of fucking joints. Yeah. I just feel like it would just offer jobs, it would just, it's a whole new industry. Of taxing. Taxing, and it would make, I think there's a fact of like $15 billion a year in taxes and about $100 billion in the next seven years if marijuana was legal. It would, it would get us out of this depression. That, and, and Andy, what would you say to, to those like the district attorney who I spoke to? Who say, who say that marijuana use is dangerous and uh, to decriminalize it, let alone legalize it, is to encourage its use and that's bad for particularly young people. All right, so who, who's going and smoking a joint and robbing a store? I know crackheads are going to rob a store because they, they need a fix. No one's really addicted to weed. No one needs weed that bad that they're going to go rob someone for money or for possessions to get weed. I don't know anyone like that. I've never met anybody like that and I don't think I ever will. It's just not how it is. I mean, you got people that are drunk driving, they're gonna drink too much and go drive because their judgment's gone. But if you smoke too much, you're gonna sit and watch a movie and not do anything. Like, no one's gonna lash out, all of a sudden have a crazy attack because they're withdrawal from weed. It's not gonna happen. It's like, it's not gonna happen. It's pretty, it's pretty